Okay, thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. And can you all hear me okay? Can Jay? Okay. Um, thank you for joining in. I'm going to be talking about uh, Turkey's role in Afghanistan. And it's, uh, the presentation is based on research that I did for an article, which is actually coming out this summer uh, in Military Review. So if you're interested in this topic, uh, be sure to keep an eye on that issue. Um, I'll speak for about 40 minutes, and then we'll do Q&A. And I have four short videos that I'm going to show you throughout the presentation. Um, so bear with us if we have technical difficulties. I think we have it working uh, great, but I think that you'll enjoy those. Um, so just to give you an overview of the presentation, I'm going to be talking about the special relationship between Turkey and Afghanistan due to the historical ties and their shared religion, the non-combat role that Turkey plays in ISAF, uh, the civilian PRTs, uh, Turkey runs two PRTs in Afghanistan, both run by civilian diplomats, um, and the diplomatic initiatives that Turkey has uh, made to bring Pakistan and Afghanistan together and to bring all of the countries that border Afghanistan together uh, to talk about, you know, sustainable solutions for Afghanistan's problems after, you know, for the long term. And um, other than that, what is Turkey doing as far as capacity development in Afghanistan? Um, and training Afghan forces, and then finally, how does Turkey view its role in Afghanistan? I think public sentiment matters, and I'll explain why. And then I'll talk about uh, conclusions. So if you watched the State of the Union speech last night, we were talking about the president touched upon the drawdown from Afghanistan, and we and announced that by this time next year, um, another 34,000 troops uh, will have returned home. And uh, by the end of 2014, uh, all of the mission, you know, the, the planned official end of the mission, um, beyond 2014, it's not clear uh, how many troops uh, will stay and what they will do exactly. Um, and similarly, a lot of European governments have also either ended their combat missions or announced plans to end their missions or uh, announced, you know, vague timetables to end their missions. And in contrast to all of that, I want to read you this quote by the Turkish Prime Minister. Um, so in contrast, what, what are the Turks saying about their presence in Afghanistan? Um, he says, Turkey will stay in Afghanistan even after all of the other forces have left and will leave only when our Afghan brothers and sisters tell us, thank you, now you can go home. So he said this in uh, May of 2012. And since then, you know, the president and foreign minister have echoed the same things, um, saying that Turkey's commitment to Afghanistan goes well beyond 2014 and, and so on. So why does Turkey uh, say this? Why do they approach Afghanistan in this way? Um, so Turkey and Afghanistan have a special relationship that goes back to 100 years, to the founding of the two countries. In fact, Afghanistan was the second country to recognize the Republic of Turkey. Uh, and the two countries have signed numerous friendship and cooperation agreements since 1921. And this slide shows you some, some of the uh, friendship agreements. The formatting got off a little bit. The third one was signed in 1937. But to show you that it goes back to 1921, and they have the special bond and treaty of eternal friendship and non-aggression pacts and, and such. And, and um, there's a saying in Afghanistan that, that no Afghan was ever killed by a Turkish bullet, and no Afghan trained by the Turks has ever betrayed his country. And it's true. If you look at the facts on the ground, um, there have been no insider attacks on Turkish troops, no green on blue attacks on Turkish troops. Um, the only Turkish casualties in Afghanistan have been due to accidents. A uh, helicopter crash uh, in March of 2012 and a, a traffic accident before that. And so they have the special bond between these two countries. So it's in this context that Turkey agreed to send troops to Afghanistan after 9-11 on the condition that they would not take part in combat operations. Um, and despite pressure from allies, Turkey sticks to this policy. Um, instead, Turkish troops are only involved in ensuring security in their areas of responsibility, providing logistical assistance to other international forces, uh, training Afghan security personnel, 
and, and contributing to capacity development. And of course, this would not be possible without the presence of other, you know, the military presence of other ISAF nations, the U.S. in particular. But nevertheless, it works really well uh, for Turkey. And before uh, I show you a, a video on that, I want to just quickly give you an overview of Turkey and ISAF. Uh, current troop contribution, uh, according to the NATO website, it's 998. Uh, Turkish sources put that a little higher. Uh, I think the numbers fluctuate constantly, but on average, we can say that Turkey has about the eighth largest uh, presence uh, among the 50 nations that contribute forces. Um, they lead two PRTs, uh, one in Wardak province and one in Javistan, which I'll also show videos about. And uh, they have been leading the Kabul Regional Command, also called the Regional Command Capital, since November of 2009. And this is a role that they've that's uh, extended for one-year periods, and it's been extended since 2009. Now they're scheduled to have it until November of this year. Uh, so, want to? Uh, oh, I'm going to play you this video now. But before I do that, I want to read you this quote from the Kabul Provincial Governor. He says. Contrary to some other international forces here, the Turks don't march through our streets with their guns and their caravans ready to fire. When you see other forces with their hands on their triggers, people are very intimidated. Afghans don't look at the Turkish forces as foreign forces here. They somehow view them as their own. So I want to play you this here now. Recently, okay. Turkey renewed their commitment to leading the ISAF support for security in Kabul. Overall, security of the city has long now been in the hands of Afghans, but with Turkey backing them in what's known as regional command capital. The Kabul province, not just on its center, is relatively calm and secure. When we checked the last figures in last year, we have experienced 52 events. When we compare these figures with the previous year, with the same uh, time period, we can easily realize that there is a 70% uh, reduction in the numbers. The bulk of the credit for this improvement must lie with the enormous and increasingly successful efforts of the Afghans, but they greatly value the Turks and take comfort in having them around. Why are the Turks happy with the Afghans and the Afghans happy with the Turks? Everyone knows it's because we are all Muslims and much of our culture and traditions are similar. Turkey sent troops to Afghanistan after the September 11th attacks on the condition that they wouldn't take part in combat operations. Contrary to some other uh, international forces here, the Turks don't march through our streets and roads with their caravans or guns or hands on trigger. When you see other forces going around hands on trigger, people uh, get very much intimidated. Afghans in a way, indirectly, don't look at the Turkish forces as foreign forces here. They somehow think that uh, uh, they are more uh, of their own. The commander of ISAF, General Petraeus, recently visited a Turkish camp in the east of the capital, which provides first-class education and health care to locals, often too poor to find it elsewhere. This little boy, Wally, suffered serious burns after he hit an unexploded mine. Inshallah, his health is much better now, completely. Compared to his previous condition, now there is a big difference. The spots you see here are healed. Now it's just this wound and this one. And the whole of the leg is healed. At another camp in Kabul, the Turks run a 12-week course training Afghan non-commissioned officers, widely considered the backbone of any army. Between Afghanistan and Turkey, there is friendship and brotherhood, more than 100 years old. They like and respect us very much. They are trying to do their best in this training. The Turks have also contributed air assets to the capital. Here in the east of the city, a Turkish helicopter detachment is regional command and eye in the sky, providing medevac and search and rescue when there's an emergency. So I think it was about two months ago there was a suicidal attack in Camp Julian where you know, a couple of uh, ISAF personnel, personnel were injured and dead and you know they wanted us to respond as an area medical evacuation unit and I remember that time we took off in about 15 minutes uh, you know and just evacuated the people. Elsewhere in the country, the Turkish have recently followed the successful civilian provincial reconstruction team in Wardak with another PRT in the north of the country. 
It's dedicated to economic development, arguably as essential as security operations to Afghanistan's recovery. Turkey has over 2,000 soldiers and civilians working in Afghanistan and says its commitment is open-ended, something which the Afghans are likely to welcome. This is Ruth Owen in Kabul for the NATO Channel. So as, as you could see uh, in the video, um, the Turks are very well liked and well respected. Um, and the, the troops that are deployed to Kabul are conducting their patrols on foot and not in armed vehicles. And uh, I read somewhere that there's a strict policy that Turkish troops cannot wear sunglasses in order to maintain eye contact with the pop population and that touching women is totally taboo. In fact, Afghan appreciation for Turkey is so strong that the troops from other NATO countries at some point, uh, I've read, uh, were beginning to attach Turkish flags to their uniforms in order to walk around the streets of Afghanistan more safely. But this practice was abandoned. So I want to continue on Turkey's non-combat role. What other roles have they played? Um, so Turkey has assumed the role of ISAF commander twice. Uh, the first time was in between June 2002 to February 2003. Uh, during this period, it increased its troop numbers to 1,300. Uh, the second period was February to August 2005. During that period, the troop numbers went up to 1,450. And during that period, Turkey also operated the Kabul International Airport. Uh, in addition, they uh, lead the Kabul Regional Command capital, as we saw in the video, and still uh, due to continue until November of 2013. And also, the NATO civilian senior civilian representative uh, was a Turk from 2003 to 2006, and he was very well liked uh, and respected. Um, so I want to move on to the civilian PRTs now. This is a map of all the PRTs. It's from the NATO website. Um, you can see the two Turkish ones, um, the Turkish flag up on the, the north in the Jalzjan province, uh, and then one in Wardak province, right near Kabul. Um, and Turks operate civilian-run PRTs, which is kind of a different concept. The, they're, they're run by uh, civilian diplomats, basically, and they decided over this con on this concept over military-led PRT because they thought it would be uh, give them an advantage in interacting with local authorities and the people, and in enabling them to to leverage their cultural ties and common values. Um, and this strategy has worked really well. In fact, um, the governor of Warda Province says talks about how the Turkish programs are very sympathetic and acceptable to Afghans because they work within Afghan culture and are sensitive to Afghan values. So here, uh, I want to play you two more videos. One, The first one is on the Wardak province, which was established in November of 2006. Uh, Jay, are we ready for that? Stand by, it's loading. Okay, thank you. So, so while we're waiting for that to load, um, so basically what, what Turks do, do in Mordak, um, they, the civilian, the director is the civilian coordinator assigned by the Turkish Foreign Ministry. Okay, there it goes. It sits at the side of the main road linking Kabul to Kandahar, Afghanistan's second largest city. A distinct red building, home to around 160-odd Turkish, who are behind numerous projects aimed at improving the lives of people in Wardak province. This Turkish PRT, or Provincial Reconstruction Team, is entirely civilian-led. The Turkish decided on this concept over a military-led PRT because they thought it would better help them interact with the local authorities and the local people in order to fulfil their mission, a concept which over the last three years appears to be working extremely well. The Turkish programs are very much receptive and acceptable to Afghans because they work within the Afghan culture. They are sensitive to Afghan values. We have very good, strong uh, historical relationships with the Turkey. Since 2006, the Turkish government has spent $20 million in Wardak. 
The money's funding a police training academy, they've built schools, restored a mosque and set up medical clinics. A fair amount's gone on building two sizable cold storage facilities, giving local farmers somewhere to keep their crops. Wardak region is uh, an agricultural region. There are uh, about 150 tons of apple cultivated every year in Wardak. Currently there are 500 tons of uh, apples in, in that region. We have been also giving training courses both here in Wardak region and in Turkey to the local farmers. The courses in agriculture take place here, a two-story building for 250 students. Wardak is one of the poorest provinces in Afghanistan. The local people are grateful for any help they can get. We cannot manage on our own. Our country is poor. There are things we need that our government cannot provide us. On our own behalf, we do whatever we can. As ISAF nations consider how best to contribute more in Afghanistan, Turkey is already increasing its help. More troops have arrived to support Turkey's new role as the lead ISAF nation in command of the capital Kabul. In addition, following the success of the Wardak PRT, the Turks want to start another. That PRT is also going to be based on the model in Wardak. And as you know, a Turkish diplomat is uh, the leader of the PRT, civilian dominated. We hope we will be able to make that contribution as well shortly. So we see the whole Afghanistan as a country which deserves the support of the international community, including Turkey. And we want a, a prosperous, developing, democratic Afghanistan. And uh, Turkey has been a long friend of Afghanistan. Turkey will continue to support Afghanistan based on these principles. William Bonnet for the NATO Channel in Wardak Province, Afghanistan. So this video was from 2009, before the second PRT was established, as they were talking about establishing the second one. And then they established the Jazjum PRT in July of 2010. And this one is also uh, civilian uh, dominated. It's operating under the Regional Command North. Um, and it houses the Turkish um, International Cooperation and Development Agency, which is basically like the Turkish version of USAID. Um, and it also houses a special police operations team and a training and advisory team. So now we'll watch a little video on the Jalzjan uh, PRT. Jalzjan province sits up in north of Afghanistan, bordering Turkmenistan. It's an industrial part of the country containing a number of natural gas fields. The population is estimated at around half a million of mainly Uzbeks and Turkmens. Two years ago, Turkey established a provincial reconstruction team in the province, supporting local projects focused on education, health and infrastructure. We are here to assist our Afghan uh, partners and brothers to help find their own solutions to their own problems. We will try to deliver as much assistance as we can so long as it is welcomed and it is asked for by Afghans. PRT Turkiya yak navid khubi bud ke mudat beshtar az yak sal az darij hasta dar qismat imran va bossazi ham ba ma hamkari dara va dar pahluy azi ba khatir ta'lim polis ma ham proje hay khubi muassir khubi ra dara va qarar ast ke dar yawail dar yawakhir nazdik ya Till now, the Turks have helped to restore and establish high schools. They have built two health clinics and dozens of roads and bridges. The Turks have also trained hundreds of Afghan police officers and soldiers. The responsibility for securing Jalzjan is expected to be handed over to the Afghans very soon. The provincial capital, Shebergan, has been under Afghan control since January. مسئولیت‌های امنیتی در شهر شبرغان وضعیت امنیتی تغییر نکرده این به شکل منفی تغییر نکرده نیروهای امنیتی ما هم اردوی ملی هم پولیس شای پیگیری داره به خاطر تامین امنیت مردم و محلات ما وضعیت امنیتی در فعلا در شبرغان خیلی خوب امنیت امنیت تامین است قبلا خو امنیت خیلی خوب بود حالا فعلا امنیت بیخی گسترده گسترده شده برای فعلا وضع چی جوزجان بسیار خوب است خیلی خوب است ما رضایت داریم 
Six months ago, near Shebergan, 20,000 cubic meters of gas reserves were discovered in the Yatim Tak area. According to government officials, about 400 families are expected to benefit from the natural gas when the project is brought to fruition. Unlike other provinces, Jaozhan hasn't had much of an ISAF presence in the past few years. Therefore, transition to Afghan control is just a formality, because practically on the ground, Afghan security forces have been leading operations for a while now. Alessandro Pavone in Kabul, Afghanistan for the NATO Channel. Great, good. So that shows you what, uh, how Turkey is approaching these civilian-led PRTs and how uh, well it's working. Um, so I want to move on to now um, capacity development and what Turkey's, oh, excuse me, diplomatic initiatives. Um, so Turkey has good relations with both Pakistan and Afghanistan and uh, has initiated a trilateral mechanism called the Turkey-Afghanistan-Pakistan Trilateral Summit. I want to read you these two quotes. Um, the first one is from the Pakistani president. Turkey is our friend and our brother Muslim country. This is why I think it's more appropriate for Turkey to support and guide us when we need it. And similarly, Afghan Minister of Foreign Affairs says, Afghans are honored and blessed to have a friend like Turkey. And you can find numerous quotes like this. Um, basically, Turkey is uh, probably the only NATO country that has a, a good relationship with Turkey, uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and they've uh, initiated this um, trilateral summit and the purpose is to improve the relations between the two countries at a minimum to keep the communication lines open and to prevent one of them from leaving the negotiation table but uh, but ideally to improve the relations and uh, get them cooperating on intelligence and fighting against terrorism and with a, with a long-term view um, so since its establishment of the trilateral summit in 2007. Eight meetings have taken place. The most recent one took place in December of 2012 in Ankara. And they take place at the presidential level. Um, and each year they focus on something different, but usually involve dialogue on economic cooperation, cooperation in the fight against terrorism, and uh, training, uh, like military trainings and intelligence, political and military fields, as well as security and like uh, I IEDs. Uh, the most important meeting uh, was probably the 2009 summit, which was the first time that the military and intelligence chiefs of Afghanistan and Pakistan came together. So even if the, the meetings do not solve the decade-long problems, they serve to keep the lines of communication open, and that's important too. Um, in fact, and after the December 2010 summit, the three countries agreed to conduct joint military exercises, uh, which took place in March of 2011. Um, and there's also other initiatives as well. There's the Istanbul for Afghanistan Summit, which is also called um, the, the Istanbul Summit for Friendship and Cooperation in the Heart of Asia. And this initiative was launched um, by Turkey again in November of 2011 and brings together all of the countries that border Afghanistan with the goal of involving all of the countries to find sustainable solutions to Afghanistan's problems. Uh, and so the presidents of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkey, uh, Iran, uh, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan all met in Istanbul, meet in Istanbul yearly. Um, and aside from the government initiatives, Turkish business uh, and private sector also have been cooperating with uh, the investment support agency of Afghanistan and they have uh, business deals in energy and mineral resources. So in the field of capacity development, um, Turkey has been training the police and military forces of Afghanistan. Uh, Afghan doctors and nurses and engineers uh, train in Turkey when, under uh, scholarship programs and things like that. Um, Turkey has so far trained about 12,500 Afghan personnel in Afghanistan and about 3,500 have trained in Turkey. And most recently, uh, Turkey is leading a NATO mission in Afghanistan, which plans to train 15,000 Afghan policemen over the course of the next decade. So uh, I want to show you this video, um, which shows 
Kabul as a model for transition. Kabul is the, one of the places where the transition of the security uh, responsibilities already started being transitioned over to Afghan forces. Um, and this is uh, showing how that's happening. And it's, the role of Turkey comes in around halfway, but it's so a good, a good video to, to show you. As President Karzai announces the start of transition for a number of provinces and districts, could the capital city of Kabul be held up as a model for others to follow? The Afghans began to look after the security of the city in 2008, and the situation looks very different today than it did three years ago. Now there are solely men in Afghan uniforms on the checkpoints controlling who gets in and out, with their ISAF mentors at a discreet distance. Has this been a success? One statistic suggests it has. In spite of a recent spike in attacks, ISAF recorded 79 security incidents in the city last year, 40% less than in 2009. Gulale has been a resident of Kabul all her life and says she's happy with the difference the added security has made to both her and her daughter's lives. Local businesses have prospered too. Shamsa owns and runs this pharmacy in the center of town. Muslim as in Waham Amrai Musulmana Mihoinke Musliman Basha wa Horijabit as Afghanistan Bora Unama Maksada Zunama in Amias. The Gabibinimki Chimisha inshallah. The road to stability was always bound to be a rocky one. But when asked about his confidence in the ANA and their progress, ISAF Commander Lieutenant General David Rodriguez said he was pleased that everything's on schedule. Again, they continue to get better and better every day. And this partnership is the fastest way we can develop their capacity. Uh, it also gives them the courage to do the right things in tough situations uh, that we uh, discussed earlier. And uh, again, I believe that the uh, objective of getting there by 2014 is doable with the glide path and the trajectory that they are on as far as increasing their effectiveness. It was the French who were in charge of Kabul when the lead security responsibility was handed to the Afghans. Lieutenant Colonel Michel Pararanda took part in the handover. Oui, donc, euh, à ma connaissance, il y a déjà euh, une province pour laquelle euh, il y a eu une transition partielle aux forces de sécurité afghanes, c'est la province de Kabul. Donc le processus a débuté à l'été 2008 et s'est terminé au mois d'avril 2009. Et euh, pendant ces quelques mois, donc, euh, tous les districts de la province de Kaboul, qui étaient sous la responsabilité sécuritaire euh, de l'ISAF, ont, ont été transférés aux forces de sécurité afghanes, donc tous sauf celui de Suroubi, qui reste toujours sous la responsabilité euh, de l'ISAF. Two years on and Turkish troops are now training the next generation of ANA warriors in Kabul who will help reinforce the security situation still further. It seems the pairing of the Turks with their fellow Muslim Afghans was an inspired idea and has a lot to do with the success in Kabul. Pour les différentes forces de sécurité afghanes, donc elles ont déjà été confrontées à ce système de transfert. Donc il y a un précédent et donc une méthodologie et des procédures appliquées pour le, le reste des, des provinces. With the winter drawing to a close, there are real fears of a resurgence in attacks by the Taliban, especially on Afghan security forces. These soldiers will need all the training they can glean if they are to hold the line efficiently, not just in Kabul, but countrywide. This is Brett Turner in Kabul for the NATO Channel.
Great, so that was the last video. And so you can see there's a lot um, a lot of things to worthy of analysis that, that Turkey's doing that's working. It seems to be working well. Now I want to talk about um, how does Turkey view its role? Uh, because public opinion matters and public sentiments present constraints and policy options. Um, there's a reluctance in Turkey to be seen as bowing to U.S. interests. And so the, the Turkish uh, mission in Afghanistan is presented to the public much more as a brotherhood duty or a brotherhood pledge rather than a NATO uh, responsibility. Um, this statement by the defense minister, I think, is a good one. It's a good example. That's a message for public consumption. He says, Afghanistan was one of the first countries to recognize Turkey during our founding. We have a pact that goes back to the era of Ataturk. Turkey will help when Afghanistan is in trouble, and Afghanistan will help when Turkey is in trouble. Our presence there has nothing to do with NATO. And this was in response to uh, some debate in March of 2012, a Turkish helicopter crash, a helicopter crash, excuse me, uh, killed Turkish, 12 Turkish soldiers. And um, that's when started, you know, people started asking, you know, why are we in Afghanistan? What are we doing there? We need to bring our troops back. And this is how they responded to, uh, to those criticisms. And so uh, the reluctance uh, to be seen as bound to U.S. interests is important. Um, and then uh, on the other hand, how do you Afghans view Turkey's presence? I took these comments from uh, one of the, these were comments posted by Afghans to one of the videos I showed you earlier. Um, and they, they say, love how, love the way how our Turkish brothers are harping my destructed, war-torn country, Afghanistan. I'm really happy that we have our Turkish brothers, Muslim brothers, to help us in Afghanistan with honesty and dignity. We are both Muslim nations and know how to treat each other. Turkey and Afghanistan equals brothers for life. It's like that. Um, so this is also, you know, a good, you know, demonstrating that Turks are appear to be winning the hearts and minds uh, of the local population. So I'm going to move here to the conclusion now. Um, and so the Turkish civilian-run PRTs are winning Afghan hearts and minds. And this points to the importance that the teams working with indigenous forces are familiar with and sensitive to local languages and cultures. Um, and again, they, they would not be able to do this without the security umbrella that ISAF provides, and it may not be exactly uh, you know, re replicable, but uh, it might offer lessons for us to analyze. Um, the Muslim faith is a common denominator and unifier among the different groups in Afghanistan. And Turkey can play a constructive role due to its good relations with both Afghanistan and Pakistan and its role in NATO. Um, so uh, I guess I'm ready to take on some, some of your questions now. That's, that's it. Have I have some questions here I'm seeing. Um, aside from the historical special relationship, how is it in Turkey's interest to, how is it in Turkey's strategic interest to help Afghanistan? You're right. I mean, it's not just the historical relationship that uh, that leads them to, to do all this. Um, there's a few uh, strategic interests that Turkey has in playing these roles. Um, well, one is Obviously, um, as long as Afghanistan is unstable, the whole region will be unstable, and that poses a security threat to Turkey. And when Afghanistan becomes a secure and stable country, this will introduce wider stability in the region, and that will bring new economic benefits for the region and for Turkey. Uh, and secondly, this provides an opportunity for Turkey to show the world uh, that <laughs> that they have a role to play, that uh, in the last decade, Turkey has been uh, playing this proactive peace diplomacy, following a policy of proactive peace diplomacy, it's the policy of the new government, well, the 10-year-old the government now uh, of the AKP, and uh, basically saying to the world that, like, look, we have this multifaceted identity of being, you know, both Muslim and European and Asian and Central Asian and North African, and we can talk to all these different countries, and we're a part of NATO, and trying to join the European Union. And so we have this multidimensional identity that we can, uh, we can, we have something to contribute. And you can, you can see this, they've, they've uh, in 2008, they offered to mediate between Turkey and uh, the United States and Iran. Uh, they've offered to mediate some of the region's, the most difficult problems in the past between Syria and Israel. They've tried to bring uh, Fatah and Hamas together and, and 
this uh, situation in Afghanistan also presents uh, an opportunity for them to show the world, you know, look, we're a member of NATO and we have these good relations with all these countries and we, we have uh, something to contribute. So they want to show the world that, you know, that they can play a greater role. And this is part of a goal of becoming So I guess where you can read the questions. Oh, okay. I see now that we've got a big long uh, line of questions, you're going to throw it at me. Great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Karen. Hey, uh, a couple of questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ray Finch throws in. Uh, how has the ISAF effort been portrayed in the mainstream Turkish press? Turkish press. And how would the average Turkish citizen characterize what was once referred to as the global war on terror? And we'll come back to the rest of it after you answer that piece. How would the Irish Turkish citizen? Um, the ISAF effort in the in the Turkish press is characterized. I mean, because they do want to help the Afghans, it's characterized as a positive thing. Sometimes, uh, you know, especially like in March of 2012, after some of the incidents that happened in uh, in Afghanistan, there was talk of. Uh, talk of, you know, criticism of the ISAF force, mainly the U.S. forces, but that was around the time when, um, you know, people were saying, like, the incidents about the, you know, burning of the Quran and things like that uh, creates some criticism of, of ISAF. Um, but in general, I think it's, it's presented, um, it's portrayed in a positive way. And how would the average Turkish citizen characterize what was once referred to as the global war on terror. Um, uh, I think Turkey sees its view, it's uh, the global war on terror uh, as an opportunity, again, for itself to show the world that, like, hey, you know, our participation in these missions uh, is so critical because we're Muslim. And so it's, it's kind of like Turkey's presence in Afghanistan um, prevents this mission from being viewed as a crusader force. So it's a, so Turkey sees itself as a very important because it's a Muslim member of this uh, global war on terror and it does participate in it and it supports it. Uh, do most Turks see Al Qaeda as a threat? Yes, absolutely, they do. Um, Al Qaeda has targeted Turkey many times. Just recently, they February first, they were uh, attacked at the U.S. embassy in Ankara. So they definitely see Al Qaeda as a threat, um, uh, as a as a terror organization. Um, and is there a risk for Turkish political authorities to gain a reputation? I'm reading the question. Is there a risk for Turkish political authorities to gain a reputation as being a fighter against what some refer to as Islamic fundamentalism? Have Turkish authorities ever come forward with a proposal to take over operational control in Afghanistan once the bulk of Americans leave? Um, I mean, they haven't come up with a proposal to take operational control and command uh, in Afghanistan. They've made statements such as the ones I showed you that they're going to be there for the long haul. And it's not clear if they can be. I mean, if ISAF leaves, if all, I don't know if, if Turkey can stay, uh, and I don't know how, you know, what, how effective they can be. But, I mean, they have not come forward with a proposal to take over operational control. Okay, and then the uh, another question down here: uh, How does the the Turkish approach uh, ha give a better understanding of the Afghan people compared to like the, how the human train teams have done? Is is it a similar effort, or is there just the assumption that the the Muslim commonality is an automatic better understanding for the societal dynamics uh, at the village and town level? Um, I guess it's not just the Muslim commonality. I mean, they also have a very common culture. And so, like I said, you know, to repeat some of the things, you know, they, there's touching women is completely taboo. They don't wear sunglasses. They don't wear bulletproof vests. And so I think, um, I think some of that stuff is also helpful in, in approaching the Afghan people and gaining their trust. Um, I mean, what what has the U.S. human terrain teams have tried to do? I'm not sure if they have done um, the same kind of thing, uh, what, what Turkey has done.
I see that a question is coming. Somebody's typing. As we're waiting for uh, the, the question to come through, has the goodwill that the, the Turks have in working with the Afghans, has that, have they tried to take that goodwill and export it to other areas where, where it may not be quite so, uh, so brotherly? Uh, what areas? The places where uh, the, the Turks aren't, uh, yeah, the Turks where they haven't where where they haven't been operating previously, uh, exporting mm -hmm. it places further south or to the to the west. I mean, not that I know. Right now, they're in Mordek and Jalzjan, as I said. Uh, beyond 2014, it's possible that. And you're, you're cutting in a little bit, cutting in out a little bit, just uh, some technical glitches. Um, it looks like uh, Dr. Brooks is throwing in, uh, how much has the Turkish success been impacted or supported by the fact that there's not more uh, kinetic and uh, there's not in the more kinetic and uh, conservative areas of Afghanistan? Karen, I'm not getting any uh, sound from you. Folks, we'll just stand by for just a moment. Okay. Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, did you get my last question from uh, the from Dr. Brooks? Uh, I will try to. So yes, absolutely. I mean, Turkish success is obviously, you know, helps. I mean due to the fact that they are in areas that, you know, security is being provided by ISAF, ISAF nations. So, and I'm not saying that this can be replicated because, you know, not, you know, their success depends on the fact that security is, is there. So, um, I think a lot of, a lot, it has, to, the Turkish success has a lot to do with the fact that they're not in the more kinetic and conservative areas. Um, I see another question. Could you expand briefly on Turkey-Pakistan relations and the extent to which these may help or may not help explain Turkish success in Afghanistan? And actually, that's the topic that I'm working on, that I'm going to be working on this year, and I'm going to be writing an article on that specific topic. Uh, but yeah, Turkey has just as uh, special relations with Pakistan as they do with Afghanistan, and, and uh, that also explains, I mean, a lot of their success because they've been they have not been attacked by the Pakistani or Afghani Taliban, and that has a lot to do with Turkey's good relations with Pakistan. And so, uh, Turkey's relations with Pakistan do uh, do explain a lot of Turkey's success. But I'll have a, a more uh, comprehensive article on this coming soon, and I'll, I'll, I can send it to you. Uh, have you looked at similarities and differences to the success of Jordanian troops in Afghanistan? No, I haven't. Um, but I'm I'm happy to look at it. And if you're if you you can email me um, at this email, and I can with your questions, and I can uh, at least point you in the right direction or see what I can find on that issue. I think we've got uh, another question or two coming in, and uh, we'll wait for just a moment. Oh, very good. Just a thank you. Okay, uh, Karen, did you have any other comments before we wrap this all up? Uh, here's my, my email and phone number are on the, the last slide, so you're welcome to ask me your questions if you have anything else. And again, my article is coming out in Military Review uh, on this topic in uh, the summer of 2013. So.